Today was a very interesting day. We ran out of water. So today we ran out of water, something that I never experienced before as a detailer. So I'm going to walk you through everything that all the problems that we experienced and how we corrected it and how we managed to get the job done. So we have the last appointment of the day. We arrive on site, get everything going, start the washing. Everything's normal. And then we hear the sound that everyone dreads to hear when that power washer makes that loud sound indicating that no more water left. Well, let me paint this picture for you on how it was. So we arrive on site, we do the wash, the contact wash, rims and tires are done, 93 degrees outside, no shade. We're in the process of rinsing all the soap and we still got two more rinses to wash. Obviously we gotta wash the soap off and we gotta do our drying aid rinse. Boom, out of water. But now that you guys know what type of environment we're in, boom, we ran out of water. We ran out of water, first thing, start freaking out. Joao starts yelling, I'm like, well, what do we do? Shut the pump off, shut the, sh shut the power washer off. We go out like, no problem. We just go tap into the water hose. The line didn't have a water hose. We weren't prepared, we didn't have our extra water hose. However, Joao goes, hey, go get the filter. We run with the extra filter, thank God. So we ever run with the, the filter, put that on. But Joel rushes and gets the drying aid. He dumps this out. And with the water that we have for our drinking water in the Yeti, he rinses this out and puts O&R in it. While he's doing that, I'm setting up the, the filter on the water line. So we're out of water. Joel uses all the water to rinse this out. And at the same time, I use the filter. He tells me, go use the filter and go put it into the spigot. So with the spigot, the filter, we're able to fill this remaining water in our drying aid. And this is why we always run with undiluted O&R. Okay, so at this point, the carbon collected electric sprayer is all filled up, 93 degrees outside. And at this point, we start going to town, spraying this all over the car, trying to get the rest of the soap off. We're oversaturating the whole car with O&R to get the rest of the soap runoff. We're not worried about any, any water spots because the O&R has a water softener in it. Joao starts putting the O&R and then he tells me, hey, go get some microfiber towels. Come back with the microfiber towels, we spray it with O&R and we begin applying that on the car. So at this point, we're doing a waterless car wash. Joao is soaking the whole car and then he tells me, hey, go get some microfiber towels. Come back with some microfiber towels. We spray it with O&R and we just pretty much doing a rinseless wash on the, at the vehicle at this point. So my experience with O&R is very limited. I used it before, but always in a controlled environment, nothing to this extent. So Joel is calmed down back to normal and he's over there doing his thing with the bead maker and drying the car, drying the car like normal. I'm more worried, I'm, in my head, I'm thinking like, are, are we doing more damage to the vehicle, to the paint? This is not something that I'm used to. I'm thinking like, oh man, this is gonna add more to the job. Uh, now we're gonna have to maybe polish uh, bring out some other some other type of tools out other type of uh, um, Other types of you know, oh, no more post work uh, At this point we have water drying on the surface already So I'm thinking oh, we're gonna have to go back and and touch up some things No, everything that we run with was uh, those all, everything that we hit the vehicle with or, with before with we use filter water and DI water, so everything was already spotless. So Joel explained to me, hey, we don't have to do none of that. All this stuff is all pH balanced soap. We use spot-free O&R. So all we have to do is just re-lubricate the surface on the exterior and wipe it down and it's a wrap. So in conclusion, we use two methods of washing the vehicle. We had the contact wash and in the middle of that, on the tail end, we finished up with the rinseless wash process. So finishing up, we did not sacrifice quality, very little downtime, and no damage to the vehicle. And what this is, is a direct result in us being prepared and ready for any type of job. So to recap, you can always learn 
to do things better. So with us, what we learned, always run with the extra water hose. We run with everything else. So that now is part of the van. So now I know the importance of why Joao always stresses to me why we always need to carry O and R, undiluted, ready to go. This product here got us out of a situation that could have been very, very bad. This product here is so versatile. You guys know Cardell Stewart? So the slash, that's what this is. You can do so much with this. Again, this product's so versatile, so many uses. We use it like we just said, rinseless wash. We use it, we could use it before we clay. We use it for windows. We use it to, as a neutralizer when we use acid, when we use our heavy degreasers. Joao uses it when he wet sands. So many different uses. So I learned some, something today. I hope you guys learned something today. And if you didn't, I recommend that you guys go get some of this. If you guys want it, description below. So if you guys have run into some of the problems that we ran into, I want to know. Let me know what you guys use, what you guys do in these situations. We have our consulting line. If you guys need help with any business tips, efficiencies, how to just how to be around better detailer, use it. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. This is Sal with Details.